Hello Poke fans and welcome back to a brand new video. This video we are going to discuss Pokemon Presents, mostly the video game portion of it. it. It's now been over two weeks since Pokemon Presents was presented to us. So here are my post Pokemon Presents reactions. New Pokemon Snap looks amazing. I honestly am really, really excited for that game. I don't really have anything else to say. It looks really, really gorgeous for the type of game that they are trying to make. I think it blows Pokemon Snap from Nintendo 64 out of the water presentation wise of what they are trying to do. And maybe even a legit story to this one because i feel like pokemon snap for nintendo 64 wasn't a bad game at all but it was something that's like you played once and that was pretty much it i feel like with new pokemon snap hopefully they can integrate many ways that the pokemon to, can interact out in the wild or even interact when you make them shine up um but yeah anyway i'm just super super excited for new pokemon snap it comes out april 30th and yeah i know nothing really else to say about it let's just get into the meat and potatoes of this video it's mostly going to be gen 4 remakes pokemon brilliant diamond and shining pearl let me start off by just saying brilliant diamond is a bad name they should have went with beautiful or blessing diamond i think those would have been better names i just don't understand how a diamond is brilliant shining pearl that's a pretty good name upon watching the trailer however I noticed that a lot of people are going to be mad because the graphics are in a form of chibi graphics, kind of like from Link's Awakening, but however in Link's Awakening everything was chibi sized, chibi sized, whatever you want to call it, everything was made to be chibi. In this game it just seems like the characters on the overworld map, they are the only one that are chibied. And it doesn't look really good in my opinion, especially when you hit like cities and caves with kind of like gray, black, brown coloring. I just feel like they could have done a better job making everything chibi-like, but uh, I don't know. And also like, I was kind of hoping they would have made, you know, a full-on remake. Kind of in a way of Sword and Shield, but slightly better on the graphics and even the frame rate and even the pop-ups. I think that would have been a much better announcement. But I can't sit here and say that i'm not excited for it because i am I, I know i'm part of the problem i'm gonna get both of them day one i don't mind the chibi graphics but i do think that they missed the mark a little bit on them however i do feel like the gameplay and the graphics when you actually hit pokemon battles is pretty cool i can definitely tell they're making an homage to pokemon pearl and diamond and their attacks but I do like the way that they look. The Pokemon seem a little more oversaturated, but that's because it's by Oka. Oka is the makers of Pokemon Home, and I feel like all the Pokemon in Pokemon Home are oversaturated color-wise. So that's not a bad thing. However, I do feel like they could probably maybe render more of a better coloring for each of the Pokemon. Overall, I do think that Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl will sell millions of copies. I'm kind of hoping maybe 20 million copies. However, vote with your wallet, of course. If you do not want these games and you kind of want to send a message to Nintendo, Game Freak, Creatures Inc., and the Pokemon Company, do not buy these games. However, I know I'm part of the problem and I'm going to get both of them, but I just love Gen 4. Sinnoh is, in my childhood, it was a second home to me because I spent so many hours in Pokemon Pearl so so many and of course the last announcement that got almost everybody and their grandmas riled up about was pokemon legends arceus now i don't want to sit here and, and kind of um talk too negatively about it since this is the first trailer this is the announcement trailer of course there were some some issues going on with it and some questionable things that i'm kind of wondering why they decided to make this type of game however let me just kind of sit here and say that i am excited for this game it comes out early 2022 i think the game artistically it looks really really good however frame rate and resolution it needs some work and i think that's where the conversation of a switch pro or super switch or whatever you want to call it is coming into the focus is because this game's frame rate and resolution is really really bad of course, we've seen Chain Link kind of bouncing around like 10 frames per second. We saw the Dawn model running and it just the resolution looked really, really low. And also, like, I think it's really important to um, notice that the character models are pretty much um, the models from Gen 4. 
because it's a retelling of what Mount Coronet and Sinnoh was before Gen 4. It's pretty much like a mythology type of story around Arceus, and Arceus is the god Pokemon pretty much. So I'm hoping with this game we can get a lot of mythology, a lot of um, brand new ways of how we look at certain like legendary Pokemon, especially legendaries and mythicals. There's way too many of them, but I think it's really, really a good idea to focus on the god Pokemon of all of them. Hopefully if we do down the road get other like Pokemon Legends, whatever, like Mewtwo for example, or Ground and Kyogre, Rayquaza, um, Kiram, you know, that kind of stuff, there'll be more mythology with the legendary Pokemon and it could tell a more better tale of why these Pokemon are legendary and why they are important to the story and to the lore of Pokemon. However, like, I am questioning why, why there's Cyndaquil, Oshawott, and Rowlet as the, the three starters. It also kind of makes me wonder, like, how old Johto... Kalos and Alola regions are because Sinnoh this takes place back a good thousand or two thousand years ago before Gen 4. So it's kind of makes me wonder how old those regions are. I don't know something to wonder a little bit. The another issue that I have is that um you know in the game we saw Dawn running, jumping, rolling, hiding in a bush to capture a wild sphinx which I think is great. It's pretty much Breath of the Wild both Pokemon. The issue that I have is that there are two Sphinx on the screen. You see Dawn throw a Pokemon at one of the Sphinx, and as it's being captured, the other Sphinx just kind of walks away. I know the Sphinx wasn't looking at Dawn or the other Sphinx. However, I think it's a little weird that that Sphinx, take a shot each time I say uh, Sphinx at this point, it's kind of weird that that Sphinx didn't react in any sort of type of way. It just walked away. It didn't run away. It didn't like attack Dawn. It didn't attack the Pokeball that the other Sphinx was getting captured in. It didn't do anything. It just walked away. And that kind of ruins the aesthetic of what Pokemon and their reactions could be of their, you know, sibling, friend, or whatever is being captured. And I was kind of hoping that this game being open world and being, being a brand new era for the Pokemon company and for Pokemon overall, I kind of wish there would have been more Pokemon reactions. Hopefully that there will be and, you know, the first trailer is just the first trailer and we can get more. But just that right there kind of puts this game at a low point in my opinion. Other issues that I have is that I Garchomp, for example, we find it next to a river, even though Garchomp is a Pokemon that likes mountains and caves. Um, plus, though, I will say is that the battle system, like the UI, it looks really, really clean. So that's a plus. And also I noticed that there wasn't like, next to the moves that your Pokemon know, like, hey, this move's super effective, not effective, not very effective next to them. Let people find out if moves are super effective or not super effective against them. Let's not play Pokemon in a casual way anymore. I feel like that's really kind of killed Pokemon and it's just made it a little too easy on some people. But I don't know, I do have a lot of questions about Pokemon Legends RCS. I'm just hoping that they will be answered in upcoming trailers and upcoming gameplay show-offs from the Pokemon Company and Game Freak. I am really, really excited for it. I'm excited for all three Pokemon games coming out this year, and of course, Pokemon Legends RCS coming out next year. What do you guys think about Pokemon Presents? Of course, this whole year, Pokemon 25th Anniversary. I'm honestly excited to see what they do with the train card games, the anime, uh, movies in the form of anime. I, hopefully we can get maybe an update on maybe another Pokemon movie that's um, real life like we did with Pokemon Detective Pikachu. I don't know. What do you what do you guys think? I also did see the Post Malone concert and if you haven't watched it, that's a really really good concert. You should check it out a little bit. There's some really really cool gifs and memes going around about certain Pokemon being in it. Post Malone actually just performing for it. It you know, not a big Post Malone fan myself, but it was a really really good concert. But anyway, what do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments below. If you're not subscribed, you should subscribe. Like this video if you like this video. Smash that bell. And I will see you all in the next video. Pokey fans, have a good day.